Okay, so we are back, and in the previous video, we talked about class blueprints versus level blueprints and the advantages and disadvantages to using uh, either of those based on your blueprint needs. Uh, we also talked about how to create uh, class blueprints, so right-clicking the content browser, choosing the blueprint class option, or from the add new, or the blueprints option, as well as uh, selecting several actors inside of your level and converting them to a blueprint, which we'll do later in this video series as well. Uh, we also talked about, if I right click and go to blueprint class, uh, the pick parent class. So uh, deciding the parent class for our newly created blueprint class so that we can inherit, inherit uh, some functionality from our parent when working with our new blueprint. And we created our light uh, underscore BP blueprint based off of the actor class, which is something that can be placed inside of our level or spawned. Uh, and then we also, actually we did a lot in the previous video, we also uh, walked through the class blueprint interface uh, and the differences between the level blueprint. So with all of that out of the way, let's start focusing on this video. Let's start creating our uh, class blueprint and the components that we will need that will comprise uh, our class blueprint. So let's go ahead and double click and open our light BP uh, blueprint here. Uh, should be inside the blueprints folder. Uh, if it is not, you can select the content browser and then search for it in the, uh, or excuse me, select the content folder and then search for it in the uh, search bar here. Just light underscore BP is what we named it and it should pop right up for us. Uh, go ahead and double click and open it up. Now, if you did not close this blueprint at all uh, from the last video in the transition to this one and you are still on the viewport tab of this particular blueprint, uh, don't worry. Uh, if you did close the uh, blueprint and you are opening it up and you are seeing the same screen here, you are on the class defaults tab and you're wondering how do I get back to the uh, viewport tab of the blueprint editor, uh, don't worry, you can do that by clicking this open in a full blueprint editor. But I kind of wanted to show this really quickly uh, because if you do not have any components or script associated with your blueprint, you're going to default uh, to the class defaults uh, tab. And the class defaults, we're not going to go too in depth in this here, but the class defaults allow you to define, as the name suggests, defaults, uh, default values for specific uh, properties for this particular class, such as networking information, rendering, uh, how it handles input, etc. Uh, all of that is defined inside of the class defaults. So to get back to the main uh, Blueprint Editor interface here, we're going to click the Open in Full Blueprint Editor. And now it's going to transition us to the event graph uh, of our Blueprint. We can hop back to the Viewport tab here. And this should look similar to how it looked when we first created this Blueprint. So uh, the first thing that we're going to need to do is add some components uh, to this blueprint so that we have uh, several objects that make up this blueprint, essentially. And as we talked about in the previous video, that can be done from the components window. Now, again, there's a couple different ways that you can add components. You can click the Add Component button here. Or if you go down to the Content Browser, let me see if I can minimize this here so that we get both on screen. Uh, if you go down to the Content Browser, uh, and you go into the starter content folder, and let's go to, uh, let me clear my filter here. Uh, if we go to the, let's go to the props folder. Inside the props folder, uh, we are going to use this lamp, uh, sm underscore lamp wall fixture here. We can also left click and drag uh, items into the components window here. You can see if you mouse over this section, it says drop asset here to add a component. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take our SM underscore lamp wall, left click and drag and drop that into the components window up here. And it's going to add a component to this blueprint. So now we have our uh, SM lamp underscore wall static mesh as a component of our newly created class blueprint. Now it's going to ask us for a name whenever we add a component. Let's just go ahead and give it a name. I guess SM underscore lamp uh, wall is fine, but we're just going to call it lamp fixture like so. And the next thing we're going to do, let's actually make this the root component. And by root, this is the thing that everything else is going to be attached to. Right now, we're using a default uh, scene root, which is a dummy object uh, that is created automatically uh, by default. We can replace this with our static mesh. So I'm going to left click and drag our lamp fixture here and drop it on top of our default scene root. So go ahead and do that. 
and our lamp fixture now becomes the root of this blueprint, which is what we want. So uh, let's continue now. Let's do a couple more things here. We're going to add some more components. Uh, so let's go to the components button here now, and let's click the add component button. So we have our fixture, and we click the add component. Uh, we want to add a light source to this now, so it illuminates light from this fixture. So we could use a point light, uh, which we've done in the uh, previous examples with our level blueprint, uh, but we're going to add a different type of light for this. So let's go into the search component option, and let's search for spotlight. So when you search for spotlight, an option will come up. Go ahead and choose the spotlight. You can see it says it emits a directional cone-shaped light, which is perfect for our little uh, fixture here. So go ahead and choose spotlight, and that now adds a spotlight component to our blueprint. So we have a static mesh component, and we have a spotlight component. Now before we do anything else, I kind of want to compile and save this so that we saved our newly created blueprint. And I'm going to drag this blueprint off screen for a second. You can minimize it, or actually, let's dock it. Let's dock it to the top up here. So I'm going to dock it to the top up here, and I'm going to go back to our level, uh, level here for a second. Let's go down to that Blueprints folder where we created our blueprint. And inside of it, you can see we now have our fixture that we added as a component. Our light source isn't necessarily emitting from this uh, thumbnail, but it is there. Uh, but now we have uh, our uh, class blueprint here that we can add to our level. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's left click and drag our newly created class blueprint into our level like so. And I'm going to add mine to the side over here on the dark side of the wall so that we have a little bit of uh, shadowing uh, where we can have our light come on. So I'm going to place it over here, place it up somewhere along the wall, something like this. And we can use the translation tool. You can, again, hit W to get to that and position it uh, somewhere on the wall. I'm going to do it something like uh, something like this. It should be good. Something like that towards the back side of the wall in the shadow there. And uh, our light is currently uh, indicated by this cone shape. It is currently pointing out in this direction uh, below our light source here. Uh, we actually want to have it coming up along the wall here. And this is where blueprints can get a little bit confusing uh, depending on your background and where you're coming from. Uh, the, this particular workflow, workflow, I should say, you may be inclined to want to modify uh, the position of this light directly inside of the level editor viewport here. But what we are going to do instead is modify that inside of our class blueprint. So I'm going to drag this down and kind of make a little bit of space here so that we can kind of see both. So there we go. There's our level. Let me back out just a little bit. Here's our level, and here's our class uh, blueprint here, and we are still on the viewport tab. Navigating the viewport tab of the class blueprint is identical to moving around in the viewport in the level editor. So we can hold down the right mouse button and kind of move around inside of it. We can hold W, A, S, and D to kind of fly around. We can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out, uh, or excuse me, not zoom in and zoom out, but uh, control the mouse uh, movement inside the viewport. So if you want to slow it down, just mouse wheel down. If you want to increase your movement speed, uh, roll it up. Uh, so what we're going to do, let's take our spotlight here, make sure that it is selected. Uh, you can select it from the components window as well. Uh, go ahead and hit E on your keyboard. That'll enter rotation mode. And what we're going to do is just rotate it uh, 90 degrees along the Y axis here, so this green arc, so that it is pointing upward. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to left click and drag and rotate that up 90 degrees like so. And you can see it also updates inside of our level editor as well. So uh, there's one more change that we need to do this. We need to actually bump it up so that it is not emitting from below our light fixture here. So I'm going to hit W to go back to translation mode. And I'm going to grab the red arrow here and move it up along the X. Oops, make sure I grab the red arrow and just move it up uh, along the X here a little bit. Now I'm moving it at a much finer speed uh, than you may be moving it. Uh, what I noticed just now is actually in between videos as I was playing around with this, I changed my grid snapping values. And that's something that you can do inside of the uh, level editor as well. Up in the top up here, if we click this drop down here, I think it was set to 10 by default. Uh, go ahead and bump that down to 1. That'll give you much finer control as you position this spotlight. Uh, inside of our little light fixture here. 
So I'm going to fly around to our level, uh, inside the level here, so we can kind of see uh, what it looks like in our level and inside of our blueprint here. Just going to position it so that the light is kind of coming out like so. Something like this. Well, not like that, but like this. I'm just going to move it. Uh, let's move it down somewhere around there. Doesn't have to be perfect, but so long as a light source is emitting out of the uh, fixture here, uh, if you want the exact values, uh, you could set those inside the details panel as well for our spotlight. So we are currently sitting at 6.0 uh, by 0 by 15.9. Just for the sake of it, I'm going to make that 16. So 6 uh, for the X, 0 for the Y, and 16 for the Z, like so. And we're going to make a couple more modifications to our light as it's super bright right now. And we also want to adjust this uh, cone radius here, which is indicated by this uh, blue cone shape. So we're going to change both of those uh, really quickly before we finish up. And first thing we're going to do is bump down this intensity a little bit. It's kind of high at 5,000. I'm going to drop this all the way down to 2,000 like so, to make that a little bit uh, less bright. Uh, then we're going to change the light color. So I'm going to click on this light color option, this bar right here. It's going to give me a light picker, so I can kind of just drag around. You can see it's updating my level as well as I drag around in here. Uh, feel free to choose any color you'd like. Uh, for our purposes, I'm going to choose a kind of uh, goldenish color, I guess, something like that, like so. I'm going to click OK to apply that color. And then the last thing I'm going to do is adjust the cone, uh, the outer cone angle. Now there's an inner cone angle and an outer cone angle. We're only going to focus on the outer cone angle here. It's currently set to 44. I'm just going to drag this uh, uh, slider over to the right a little bit and stretch out that cone angle just a little bit. You can see that our light in the level now is kind of expanding. Uh, we want to get it somewhere around, uh, I'd say somewhere around, let's see. Let's try 60. So I'm going to enter in 60, actually. Somewhere around there. Feel free to play with these values until you get something you are happy with. I think that's good enough for now, because I want to get back to scripting stuff. So uh, we've added uh, our spotlight. We've added a static mesh. And I kind of wanted to point this out as well. Uh, what we are looking at inside of the level editor here is not just a uh, spotlight or a uh, lamp, or not lamp fixture, but a static mesh. Uh, we are looking at a blueprint class. That's just what we have created and placed inside of our level. So this is a singular actor inside of our level. It is not multiple actors uh, that are placed in our level. It is a singular actor with multiple components. And those components are our static mesh for our light fixture and our spotlight and additional components, which we're going to add now before we wrap up this video here. So we have the visual aspect of our light here. We want to add some interactivity to this, similar to what we did with our uh, level blueprint example. Uh, we're going to add a volume that when the player enters can turn on and off this light. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's add another component inside of our light blueprint here. So I'm going to click the Add Component button. And inside the search box, Previously, we added a box trigger. So if I search for box trigger, nothing comes up. But if I search for box, see there's an option for box collision. Now, this box collision component is the same thing as uh, using that box trigger before. So go ahead and choose the box collision. And it's going to add a box uh, component for us inside of our viewport here as well as inside of the level viewport. So if I back out, you can kind of see it. And as you can see, our uh, box uh, component is currently sitting inside of our wall, and it's currently up in the air. What we probably want to do is stretch it and kind of uh, alter it so that it's uh, flush with the floor and extends a little bit out away from the, the wall. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to do that, again, inside of the viewport of the Blueprint class that we've created. We're going to take our translation widget and grab the x-axis and drag it over to the right just a little bit so that it comes off the wall and is somewhat flush with our light fixture. It doesn't have to be perfectly flush, but just so that it doesn't protrude onto the other side of our wall here and you can turn on and off the light uh, from inside this room here, which is what we probably don't want. I think that's good. It looks close enough. Uh, but we also need to stretch it down to the floor as well. So uh, to do that, we're going to go into our scale mode. So inside of our viewport here, we're going to hit R to enter scale mode. 
And I'm going to take the Z axis and let's see, just stretch it uh, up a little bit and that's going to stretch it. I'm uh, going to go and press W now to go back to translation. And then I'm just going to slide it down a little bit so that it reaches the floor. And we can see inside of our level here, it's kind of penetrating the floor. It's just fine. It can be flush. Uh, sticking to the floor is just fine. It shouldn't bother us too much. So now if we fly inside of our level here, here's our volume that we will need to enter. Uh, we could make this a little bit wider if we wanted or make, make it stick out a little bit further, but I think this is good for now. I think we can continue to move forward. So we're about 15 minutes in. We're going to add one more component before we wrap this video up. Uh, in the next video, we'll do our functionality. So let's add that final component before we wrap this video. Uh, we want to add a little bit of uh, user friendliness to this. So when the player enters this, they're not going to know to turn on this light. They're not, they're not going to know that they have to press a button because that's what we want to do for this particular volume. Before, when we entered this one, it would automatically turn on and off. For this one, we want to turn it, uh, set it up so that when the player enters this volume, they can then press a button to turn this light on and off. So that's what we're going to do for this uh, particular volume. But we need to let the player know that they need to press a button. So a quick and easy way to do this is by adding a component. So go ahead and click Add Component, and let's search for text. So we're going to search for text, and it's going to give us a text renderer component. And this renders text in the world uh, with the specified uh, given font. So let's go ahead and choose a text renderer component. It's going to add another component for us. And as you can see, it's added some text uh, inside of our level here. And it's also added it as a component inside of our viewport here. Uh, it's currently sticking inside of the wall, and it currently says text. So we can hop over to the Details panel to change uh, the properties of our text component that we just added. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Under the Horizontal Alignment, uh, under the Text section here for Horizontal Alignment, click this drop-down. Let's change this to Center. That will center up our text. And then let's actually change the text from text to something a little bit more descriptive. Uh, we're going to call, we're going to enter in, uh, let's say, press F to toggle. So when the player presses F, that will be what we use to toggle on and off this light. So I'm going to hit Enter. And our text is super big right now inside of our level. So let's actually scale that down a little bit. We can do that from the world size option here under the text section. It's currently set to 26. Let's set this to, I don't know, 18, uh, maybe a little bit more. Let's set it to 12. Might be a little too small. I think that's good enough. We'll set it to 12. Uh, we do also need to adjust the position of this text. It's currently sitting up pretty high and inside the wall. <clears throat> so what we're going to do, let's go inside of our viewport here. Let's drag it down just a little bit, and let's slide it out away from the wall, something like so. So now, if we look at it inside of our level, when the player comes in and enters this volume, they'll get this text that appears that says, press F to toggle. And the last thing that we need to do uh, before we wrap this video up is scroll all the way down to that visible option for rendering. We're actually going to uncheck this so that it is not showing, because we only want this to appear when the player enters our volume. And we're going to set that portion of script up through Blueprint Script on our event graph uh, actually in the next video. So make sure it's set to hidden, or excuse me, visible is unchecked so that it is hidden in game. So let's compile and save. And let's actually pause here before we continue. Uh, so far, we've added all the components that we need to our Blueprint class, and we've gone through the workflow of adding components and manipulating components uh, inside of the Blueprint editor. Uh, and then placed our newly created Blueprint act, or asset into our level uh, to get a singular actor that has all of these components and everything we need for our Blueprint uh, to work uh, inside of our level here. So that's going to do it for this video. We're going to pause here, and we'll pick it back up in the next video where we start working inside the event graph and uh, creating the Blueprint script for the functionality of this particular uh, light here. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.